All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kino with stemwithkino.com, and today um, we're going to talk about Chapter 7 of your text. Um, in the introduction, this chapter covers the primary systems found on most aircraft. These include the engine, propeller, induction, ignition, as well as the fuel, lubrication, cooling, electrical, landing gear, and environmental control systems. The power plant. An aircraft engine or power plant produces thrust to prepare an air, propel an aircraft. Reciprocating engines and turboprop engines work in combination with the propeller to produce thrust. Turbojet and turbofan engines produce thrust by increasing the velocity of air flowing through the engine. All of these power plants also drive the various systems that support the operation of an aircraft. So this is the beginning of chapter 7 of your text. We're going to cover aircraft systems. So this is probably going to be a multi-part series. And um, <clears throat> let's jump in. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about are reciprocating engines. All right. And as we can see in the graphic here, reciprocating engines, um, these are pretty much like, this is like the innards of the engine. You can see like on the outside, you would see the cooling fins. But inside, like your car, there are cylinders a crankshaft, um, what else? We have the uh, the actual cylinders that move up and down and we have some mechanisms going on which we're going to discuss. But the first engine that we're going to talk about is the reciprocating engine and this is pretty much found on um, you know light aircraft like your Cessna 172's, your Pipers, like the four seat aircraft okay um, this happens to be a radial engine because the cylinders are arranged in a radial um, arrangement they kinda go around the crankshaft but there are other cylinder arrangements that you could have so um, let's talk about um, let's see we will talk about this as uh, 172 engine all right, and let's go to images. All right, now as we look at this engine, this is pretty much a four-cylinder engine. Um, so we have a cylinder here, and we have a cylinder here, we have a cylinder on the other side, and a cylinder here. Now these cylinders are said to be horizontally opposed, which means they're not like the radial engine that we saw in our text, where the cylinders go around the crankshaft. The crankshaft would run in the center here and all these um, cylinders are kind of connected and there's some things that go on inside the cylinders to help rotate the crankshaft and the crankshaft in turn rotates the propeller so that's how we get it to spin but in the Cessna 172 um, and I'm not sure this, if this is an actual Cessna 172 engine but we have a four cylinder um, and this is a horizontally opposed like a Cessna 172 engine. So the horizontally opposed kind of gives you an indication of how these cylinders are arranged. And these cylinders, we have a four cylinder horizontally opposed engine. Now what you can't see is the actual cylinders uh, inside. The uh, You can't see these pistons, they're not cylinders. This arrangement is a cylinder but these are pistons. So you can't see the pistons when we look on the outside. So it would look like this on the outside. And all you would see is the cooling fins. But these pistons are, are connected to, you know, connecting rods. And uh, we'll talk about the uh, way that these uh, reciprocating engines operate. Um, so we often talk about a four-stroke cycle. All right. And this video is by Yash Verma on YouTube and you can look at this but this is a um, representation of what the crankshaft this is the crankshaft and this is the piston and it's going to take us through how this works now this is in slow motion and you can see um, some things going on here so we're going to talk about the basic components the basic components are the piston the connecting rod, 
and the crankshaft. Now this crankshaft is connected to the propeller. So some things go on that happen here. First is the intake phase. And I'll pause. <clears throat> Notice that you have atomized fuel and air go in at this point and the piston falls downward. Then after the fuel air mixture comes in, this piston rises up and it kind of pressurizes it because as this, as this piston moves up, it's going to put pressure on this fuel air mixture. All right. So the intake phase is when this valve opens, the fuel and air come in and then it will close and then this piston will come up. So what we have here is air and atomized fuel. When we think about atomized fuel, think of fuel. When we put it in a fuel tank, it's liquid. Think of like if you wear cologne or perfume. When you're looking at perfume or cologne bottle, it's very wet inside the substance, inside the, the bottle is wet. But then when you spray it, it's like a mist, so it is atomized. So we have atomized fuel in this situation. And this is the compression stage. Now the power stage is when the spark plug, or we don't call them spark plugs in aviation, we call them magnetos. And when this lights up, this fuel air mixture is ignited. And what happens is it expands the heat. The heat or the fuel air mixture is heated and it expands and it actually pushes the piston back down. All right. And then the exhaust part, this valve is going to open up and the fuel air mixture or the burnt charge of fuel air is going to be pushed out of the uh, cylinder. And we can see that happening. Fuel delivery system. We have the intake manifold and we have the intake and exhaust valve. So when this valve drops, that's when the fuel air mixture comes in and then it closes so the fuel air mixture can be compressed. And then after the spark plug lights and pushes this back down and comes back up, then this opens up and it allows the fuel air charge to be discharged. All right, so we can see, um, we can see the uh, intake manifold it's spraying the fuel in. We can see the spark plug. They call it a spark plug, but it's actually a magneto. And let me pause for a second. Okay, and we're back. So we can see that the intake compression power exhaust situation is happening in a very slow motion here all right so during the intake stroke it takes in the fuel air mixture now it's compressing and then the spark plug or magneto is going to light after it's compressed and go into the power stroke and it pushes the piston back down or they call it the combustion stroke but this is when the power stroke happens and exhaust this valve opens up and the fuel air the burnt fuel air charge is uh, pushed out all right so this is what we call a reciprocating engine because it this system has pistons that move back and forth back and forth that's what reciprocating means moving back and forth and we see this rotates 83 times per second so that's pretty fast at 5000 rpms All right, but we slowed it down so you can actually see what's going on so that was probably more representative of what how, it, how fast it moves we when we um get it there so that is the reciprocating engine and you're probably going to see it on aircraft like uh you know like light aircraft like the Cessna 172 here is a uh representation 
of either a Cessna 172 or a Cessna 152. Uh, but you can see that the cylinders are horizontally opposed, and you can see how it's connected to the propeller. So this is our first aircraft, the reciprocating, our first engine, the reciprocating aircraft engine. All right. Um, and we talked about the four strokes, intake, compression, power, exhaust. Now, um, the next type of uh, engine system is called a turboprop, short for turbine propeller, or turbine propeller. So instead of having the cylinders move back and forth like the reciprocating engine, we actually have a turbine engine that is turning and it's connected to a gearbox that in turn turns the propeller and it pulls the air from the front to back and that's how the thrust is produced by this particular type of engine so the turboprop or turbine propeller uh, but most people commonly call it a turboprop prop, uh, they uh, would have this type of system so we don't have the cylinders rotating we have actual uh, uh, actual turbine and then finally we have uh, a pure turbine system all right so we're going to zoom in there's no propeller on the outside and is this going to go to a uh, okay so we can see that we have the air flowing in and you still have the intake the air is being sucked in the compression it goes into a smaller area and the air is uh, just compressed and then we spray fuel into this canister and then the exhaust it goes right out the back so in all these st systems you will still have the intake compression power exhaust uh, going on all right so those are our three types of uh, propulsion systems the first one being the reciprocating engine the second one being the turbine propeller and then a pure turbine all right so this is very interesting because cold air comes in and in, in the combustion chamber fuel is introduced into um, you have your fuel injection holes and fuel is in, 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 uh, injected into or atomized into this situation and then the expansion comes here comes here because when it's heated up the air molecules expand all right here you can see how the fan blades are uh, rotor and stator blades are you have your stators that stay still your fan blades that move but what they're actually doing is compressing the air and you can see the temperatures goes from 10 degrees to about 450 degrees Celsius so it gets pretty hot and we get a lot of expansion there um, when we get to the back side and the cool thing about this is you have your rotor blades that are um, <laughs> connected at the back and as long as these things are turning they're connected to the uh, front and they keep notice how they move at the same time so as long as ex expansion the power and expansion happen here the intake blades are going to still keep sucking in air as this is this is blowing it out the back all right um okay so that covers propulsion systems um we can see this horizontally opposed cylinders uh, in your text it talks about the different uh, components of a spark plug ignition reciprocating engine and we can see the intake where the air is let in and we can see the power stroke where the fuel the spark plug or magneto lights up and pushes it back down but that video was a lot uh, more representative of what happens or here where we see this valve open up so all of this is in your text I just showed you a video to give you a, an idea of what's happening as it's in motion because you really can't see this in motion but when we came back here we could see everything in motion 
and slow down so you can really understand what's going on. All right. Now, let's talk about, since we've talked about our engines, let's talk about um, some controls. All right, and we'll turn the sound off and we'll blow that up. And we are currently, I believe we're at, at Teterboro Airport. So, um, what I want to show you are some systems and maybe you, we may see it better from the um, right seat. Let's see if we can see it better from the right seat where you can actually see the controls here. Okay, so we have our throttle. Our throttle is your gas pedal, if you would, like in your car. You would actually, and let's put the control brake on, or parking brake on. So when you apply power or apply the gas, you press this in. When you take your foot off or release pressure on the um, accelerator of your car, it's synonymous to pulling this out. All right. Now, how do you know how much throttle or how little throttle to lose, use? Well, we have something here called a tachometer. And in this particular system, this is just a basic reciprocating engine system. As we throttle up, you're going to see the needle rise here. And this tells you how fast the propeller is uh, rotating. And uh, it's about 1,700 RPMs because that's 15, 16, 17, slightly over 17. So as we pull back, the propeller turns slower. As we push forward, the propeller turns faster and it gives you more thrust. If we pull out, we get less thrust. If we push in, we get more thrust from the aircraft. All right. So basically, in order to take off, you would just push this full forward and make sure that your fuel air mixture is rich, you know, for takeoff. And uh, we'll talk about mixture down the road. But this is typically how a basic fixed pitch propeller Okay, and we'll talk about constant constant speed props and fixed pitch propellers down the road. But a fixed pitch propeller is a system where this propeller or um, the blades of the propeller are fixed. They do not move. There are other systems where we have constant speed propellers where the angles of these, uh, prope these propeller blades will actually be able to be controlled. Or, or moved okay but this particular system is a fixed pitch propeller all right so this propeller does not move and we can tell by the controls because there is just a throttle control if we had a fixed pitch or constant speed propeller we would actually have a blue control in the middle um, and we would not be reading this for um, your throttle you would have a manifold pressure gauge which I'm going to go into in a little bit and that's how you would set your throttle according to a man manifold pressure gauge and in your propeller you can have it uh, rotate at a certain amount of revolutions per minute so in your air airplane flying manual or your pilot operating handbook you would have um, certain settings and I'm going to discuss that in a minute so in order to like I said, in order to take off in this situation, basically all you would do is, uh, and let me get these uh, rudder positioned properly. Ugh. I'm falling apart, y'all. Don't worry, we'll get it together. We got it. <clears throat> so, in a fixed pitch propeller system, all you would basically do is just push the throttle full forward for takeoff. There is, uh, there are various power settings that you can use for like maybe like a cruise climb or a climb out, but basically the procedure would kind of look like this. And I have the uh, 
sound cranked down so you can hear what I'm saying. It's, it really wasn't that loud. No, it's really not that loud. So we will uh, proceed. All right, let's come back. Virtual. So let's get our heads up a little bit. I just want you to pay attention because we have our RPM indicator here. When we push the throttle in, it's going to come up to tell us that, hey, your propeller's spinning faster than it was. Where we're at now is the idle position where the uh, propeller's really not cranked up. But if we push this in, you see the RPM gauge come up. We'll take it out. All right. Here's our airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator helps measure our airspeed through the air. All right. So let's just see how well our rudders are going to play because this is a, a different simulator. Okay, so the rudders are moving. All right. When I'm actuating or moving, I'm depressing the foot pedals. Get this. So for power, that is the throttle. If we look down, we actually steer with the foot pedals. This would be the pilot seat and this would be the co-pilot seat. So we're moving that rudder with these feet pe foot pedals right here. And this is actually how we steer on the ground. We don't turn the control wheel to steer. All right. So just to give you an, an indication of what a takeoff might look like. And we're going to be steering with our feet as we throttle up. Now, like I told you before, these uh, the rudder here is a little bit hairy. So we're going to pay attention to our tachometer as we take off. So I'm just going to take the parking brake off and we're going to smoothly advance to full power. Now the thing about takeoffs, we don't look here. We look down, we look way down here. And that's how we maintain our orientation. All right, we're not looking down here, we're looking down here. All right, after we hit our rotation speed, we pull back on the yoke and we let the airplane wings aerodynamically take the weight of the aircraft um, and we produce the wings producing lift. So, boom, we have an airplane that's climbing out. Okay, and this is uh, Teterboro Airport. All right, so this is your basic reciprocating engine aircraft. All right. There's no propeller control. Wow, look at all that traffic down there. <laughs> Must be like 380 or something like that. I like uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, man. The realism is like crazy. You got trucks down there and everything. Okay, so... We're going to go ahead and we're going to reset the uh, scenario here. And we're going to switch to an airplane that has a constant speed prop. And we're going to talk about that procedure. And we're going to use the same runway. All you guys, if you don't have Microsoft Flight Simulator Steam or uh, or P3D, I recommend that you get it. This will enhance your flight training. You can do so much. It's like unbelievable. And as you can see, I have quite an array. Because uh, I do a lot of videos and stuff like that. So I'm trying to find... Might as well find the same kind of a very similar make and model. And it was up higher. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Just bear with me a minute, folks. will find the put 
particular aircraft I was looking for. There we go. Alright, so. We'll let this load up. And then we'll put our parking brake on. Now this propeller has a constant speed prop. So we had our mix control like the other airplane. We have our throttle control. And then we have a blue control there that um, has our it, it makes our um, propeller spin at a um, certain speed. Now we have the RPM gauge here, but we also have a manifold pressure gauge. So the throttle actually moves the manifold pressure gauge, not the throttle so much. Now it may move it a little bit initially. But once we set, once we set um, our prop speed, and let's just say our propeller, our prop speed, or our climb out speed is 20 inches of manifold pressure and tw uh, 2,000 RPMs for our propeller RPM. So it's not just like slamming the throttle and just kind of, you know, doing our thing. We actually have to set our manifold pressure gauge with the throttle and our propeller uh, RPM and if we set this for a power setting of 2020 which means 20 inches of manifold pressure and then uh, 2000 we just say 2020 because it looks like 20s in both of the gauges so let's just say that is our climb our pre pre prescribed climb out um, power setting according to the manual so the procedure is going to look very very similar and I think I'm going to go to the right seat so you can actually see, well, the needle will come up here. All right. Because I don't want to be looking all cockeyed. Let's see. I guess you can still see it. All right. So 20 and 20 is going to be our power setting after we break ground. So let's get our heads up a little bit. And again, we have our, our, our throttle, we have our propeller setting, and then we have our uh, mixture, which we're not going to touch. And we'll talk about mixture. Um, well, we'll talk about it now. When we fly at higher altitudes, above 3,000 feet, the air gets a little bit thinner. So we can actually manually reduce the amount of fuel going into the engine. That's what this control is for. We can pull it out. It'll choke the engine if we pull it all the way out. What we could actually, I don't know if we can roll this. Yeah, we can roll this. So we can take this nice and easy. Let's see if we can do it here. Yes, we can. Yeah, sound like Obama. Yes, we can. And we can actually do it there as well. All right, so we're in the same runway, and the takeoff procedure is going to be a little bit different with a constant speed prop. Uh, in this case, we're going to just push the throttle all the way in. release the brakes and again we're looking down the runway we'll get that center line right under your foot okay and we're gonna hit our rotation speed and we'll pull back gently all right and I believe we have gear up here so we're retracting the gear now And the gear going into the belly of the aircraft to reduce drag. All right. So now, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our power settings for climb. All right. So again, we said that 2020 is our pre prescribed power setting. All right. So we're going to look at the manifold pressure, and we're going to pull back till we get 20 and it's set at 20 and then we're going to pull the propeller control back so it sits at 20 and you can see that moving there and we're right about there All right. and then everything is just business as usual we also have a cruise setting where um, we will cruise at a certain power setting um, and then that is a certain manifold and um, uh, propeller speed setting so with the constant speed prop, no matter what I do, um, 
the manifold pressure, the manifold, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, governor, there's a governor in here that actually twists the blades to maintain 2,000 RPMs. All right. So these are both uh, reciprocating engine aircraft, and we're in the climb out. Now, let's go to the turbine propeller. Right, let's reset you. And let's talk about the turbine propeller, or turboprop. Uh, here's the turboprop. And in this situation, what we just got off were two aircraft that actually were reciprocating engine aircraft because that piston is moving back and forth. That's what reciprocating engine means. Now we're going to deal with the uh, turbine propeller or turboprop. All right, so we're back on the ground at Teterboro and we're going to have to switch airplanes. One of the coolest turbo propellers I think, in my book, is the King Air. Um, I have quite a bit of flight time in the King Air. The King Air is really, really cool uh, aircraft. And this particular, it's made by Beechcraft. All right. Okay. The King Air. So, as this loads, you can actually hear the turbines that was you hear the propellers but you can actually hear the uh, the turbine spinning all right now there's actually a turbine inside of here no pistons all right so this is this is a very similar situation what's going on inside of this turboprop engine there's actually a turbine in here, and that's that whistle or that jet whistle that you hear. Now, this is a reversible flow engine, so the air just doesn't come here. It's actually turned around, and the air is like sucked in through the back and blown out through these tubes, these black tubes that you see, the hot exhaust there. But there's a gearbox that's connected to the... Actually, no, not in the King Air. It's exhaust gases that uh, twist the propeller on the King Air. This is a pretty cool plane, widely used around the world. So you can hear the turbine spinning. Um, now, you will have something called a condition lever. All right. So we still have our power, our throttle controls, and there's two because there's two engines. Then we have our propeller controls, so we can maintain our propeller speed by actuating this. And then our condition level lever is what we use. It's that mixture, a red mixture. If we pull these all the way back, the fuel will cut off. But for just start up and initial fl flying, we will have this all the way up. And then as we, you know, um, get into a cruise, we can watch uh, our fuel flow. All right. And we can pull that condition be le lever back to regulate our fuel flow. All right. So the takeoff in this is just pretty much the same. Um, so turbo prop. Okay, so we can see our two engines and we can see our two exhaust ports. All right. So again, our takeoff is not really going to be, it's going to be different. It's going to be much faster, number one. Um, so. And you can hear the turbines. And you hear the propellers wham, wham, spinning faster. But you can actually hear the turbines. So there are no recipro, this is not a reciprocating engine aircraft. This is a turboprop, or a turbine propeller aircraft. We'll rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Okay. 
Okay, so just because you see propellers on an aircraft does not mean that is a it is a reciprocating engine aircraft. Okay, there's actually a turbine, two turbines inside the uh, cowlings. Okay, but you're still, no matter what, going to get the intake compression power exhaust. Okay, and then last but not least, we'll go ahead and reset this, and then we're going to go with our turbine. or turbo turbofan engine. So all we're doing is basically resetting the scenario and let's come up with a turbine powered aircraft. All right. I love the CRJ. Now as we get into different genres of airplanes, you're going to see systems change. Okay, This is an EFIS, which is an electronic flight information system. So this is like all digital. Now, they will back up the system for redundancy, because if this fails, then we have a backup attitude indicator. If this fails, our co-pilot has an attitude indicator over there. All right. And they both use this as a backup, whether this one fails or this one fails. But in a lot of cases with the electronic flight information system, we have um, multifunction displays where we can actually change um, the system. So let's blow that up a little bit. All right. So we can take a look at that and we can see our different systems and we can see what's going on. We have our hydraulic system, our flight controls. Um, as we move around, you can see the positions moving with the rudder, elevator, ailerons, and things of that nature. This is a high performance aircraft, so um, it's gonna have some amenities that most other airplanes don't. Okay, we can see our spoilers. Well, we can't really see them. Now we can see them. We can have our spoilers. The spoilers actually destroy lift. We typically use uh, spoilers after landing. If you've ever been on a commercial flight and the plane main gear touched down and then the um, uh, nose wheel touches down, and these will automatically pop up if they're armed. In addition to that, we have reverse throttle. If you look here, you can see that the engine cowling has opened up. All right, and we're in a reverse throttle mode. So this is actually a braking system. So after you land, the reverse throttle actually helps you slow down. All right, and you can see the aircraft moving backwards because the reverse throttle. So when we land and we touch down and we land, um, and the nose wheel comes down, then we'll go to a reverse throttle to assist us with the braking. So some aircraft that have reverse throttle, you can actually brake with your reverse throttle. Like, you almost don't even have to touch your brakes. Or you get yourself to a slow speed where you don't overwork the brakes. Okay. And we'll take it out of reverse throttle. And the aircraft moves forward like it should be. All right. If we look at the throttle controls... Were those spoilers still up? Yes, they were. Let's uh, close the spoilers or retract them. All right, so. Now here is the throttle quadrant. So as we add a power, we push forward. And if we reduce power or idle, we'll have that. And we can see our engine gauges here to see what's going on. So when we go into reverse throttle, we actually have to pull these two levers up in order to get reverse throttle. Okay. And at this point, 
we can see that our engines ramp up and then as we let it out they power back down all we're doing is re redirecting the thrust we can also see our flap position which I'm going to put in a notch of flaps all right and our actual flap switch is actually right there uh, but I did it and I don't know if you heard that but um, all right so let's look at the takeoff procedure with this one and it's, it's, it's very you can notice with the various types of aircraft you could see um, that's another client and then we'll finish this alright so we'll go to full power release the brakes airspeed alive Taking off a runway one. Okay. Gently pull back on the yoke. Positive rate. And gear up. That is a beautiful, beautiful bird. And we did use the notch of flaps. Flaps help us take off on uh, off of uh, shorter runways and avoid obstacles at the end of the runways like buildings or trees or mountains or whatever. So this is definitely a high performance aircraft. And um, that's really about it. So we talked about reciprocating engine aircraft, turbo propeller aircraft, and we talked about turbine or turbojet, turbofan aircraft. All right, so. This is Kino with stemwithkino.com. I hope you learned something and enjoyed watching this video. See you guys next video. Bye-bye. Beautiful view from the flight deck. See you guys later.